We're at the point in the New World Order where the globalists are now openly admitting and bragging about what it is that they've done, things that previously would get you or I called a conspiracy theorist, things like Google manipulating the top search results in order to help leftist causes. You know, we partnered with Google, for example. If you Google climate change, you will, at the top of your search, you will get all kinds of UN resources. We started this partnership when we were shocked to see that when we Googled climate change, we were getting incredibly distorted uh, information right at the top. So we, we're becoming much more proactive. Um, you know, we own the science and we think that the world, you know, should know it. And, and the platforms themselves also do. Um, but again, it's, it's, it is, um, it's, it's a huge, huge challenge that I think all sectors of society need to be very active in. But Google isn't the only one dumping information down the memory hole in order to cover their tracks. In preparation for this video, I was trying to find this old article from the Associated Press from 1989. Headline, UN predicts disaster if global warming is not checked. <laughs> And now this is the archived article on the Associated Press's website. <laughs> Notice something that's missing? The browser tab, which usually displays a preview of the article headline, says null, <laughs> meaning nothing, or it's not there. I tried looking at it in numerous different browsers to see if there was just some weird glitch with Firefox, but the same thing is on the Safari browser and on Google Chrome. The only way I was able to dig this article up with the actual headline was by looking it up in the Internet Wayback Machine, which archived the original page. Of course, YouTube, which is owned by the same corporate conglomerate as Google, remember it used to be owned by Google, but then in 2015 they did their corporate restructuring and created the new holding company Alphabet, which technically is the parent company now. But anyway, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, which makes perfect sense. And of course, we all know what they've done with the search results over here for the last five years. Right now, the top search result for climate change is an amazingly powerful video by MSNBC with 5,000 views. How climate change fuels monster hurricanes. And in case you haven't heard, last year YouTube updated the algorithm to search out and automatically demonetize videos that deny that there is a climate crisis. They call that harmful misinformation. But thankfully the AI, which transcribes everything that's said in the video into a transcript and then searches those transcripts for certain keywords, which are then flagged, it doesn't understand sarcasm. So let me just say that I'm very concerned that the cow farts are gonna cause the end of the world in the next, what is it, seven years now? We should all eat the bugs in order to stop it. Thank you, Bill Gates. I'm also sad to report that YouTube automatically demonetizes videos about the Eat Day, Eight Day, like the video that I posted yesterday that mentioned those forbidden words and a bunch of conglomerate uh, organizations that are involved in that uh, <clears throat> fact. Thankfully, they at least didn't strike the video and take it down yet, but they did give me this warning that it contains harmful and dangerous information. So I may start posting more videos now, and in order to do that, I may have to go old school, at least sometimes. Remember those older videos I used to do? It's been about two years now, where it was just the web page and my head in the corner with a little webcam, and then I would just sort of look at the articles and narrate things. Those are a lot easier to produce because there's no or very little post-production in those videos. Whereas these videos, maybe not this one, but most of the, even the shorter ones like this, take a lot of work and post-production. I have to go and screenshot all of the clips and all of the articles and all the videos. Even just the slow zoom in on the articles that I show. All that stuff just is very cumbersome and takes a lot of work and time. Pretty much every video I do, I come up with an extremely detailed outline so that I can touch on all the specific points that I want to get to. Because I'm such a perfectionist that I have a hard time just sitting in front of the camera and just going off the top of my head. I really have specific things that I want to cover. I can't even tell you how many outlines I write that I don't even end up making a video for and then I just end up deleting or I use that information in my books because a couple days goes by and then maybe this might be the perfectionist in me but Two or three days goes by and I start thinking, oh, that's old news. And there's other things that I want to talk about. And there is a point of diminishing returns as far as a high produced video. And so I kind of wonder if I'm wasting my time trying to produce these extremely, you know, problem high quality, high produced 
videos as opposed to sort of more informal, you know, just sitting in front of a webcam with a bunch of internet tabs open and just going through content that way. I'll still do videos like this, don't worry, and the in-depth reports. Those are the really serious reports that I do, which is content taken directly from my books. I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit, try some different things, which is why I posted a couple of YouTube shorts over the last few weeks. Those are those very brief videos that look like they're shot on a cell phone. It's a new format that YouTube has been testing. Basically, they're probably trying to be like TikTok, which is a horrible move, and especially for my audience, for us, we're not into five second little videos looping, right? But I tested the format because it was supposed to help you reach a new audience and, and get new subscribers, but they fell flat. They got one third of the normal views that an average video gets, and one of them actually caused people to unsubscribe to the channel. So that's what those videos are about and the weird formatting. I'm gonna try a few more and so some of those clips may be old ones that you've already seen. I apologize for that. But again, the YouTube short format is supposedly designed to help reach new viewers. I'm going to experiment with it a couple more times. So bear with me. And I know as the video comes to an end, you're expecting me to plug my t-shirt store, which I'm not going to do because this video is all about trying new things. Instead, I'm going to plug the paid subscription and the super thanks feature. Click the join button below the videos to sponsor my channel for five or 10 bucks a month through a paid subscription. Or if you click the thanks button or the heart with the dollar sign in it, you can leave what's called a super thanks in the comments, which is sort of like a super chat in a live stream. It highlights your comments and it's a way for you to tip the channel when you like a video. So take a look below the videos, find the join or the thanks button, and check them out!